This tutorial is part of a YouTube course playlist and a Udemy course. You can access the first phases of this course on YouTube or the whole course at Udemy. Links to both can be found in the video description. In this course, I am using linting and formatting Python code tools, and this can offer several benefits that contribute to better code quality, readability, maintainability, and additionally, collaboration if working within a team. In this tutorial, I'll take you through the setup that I'll be using in this project. And as we work through, I'll provide some additional information to help you understand why it is we are installing these different extensions. So first of all, let's go ahead and check out the documentation. You will find the VS Code documentation. <clears throat> Gives you an overview of the extensions that we're going to be utilizing, as well as some optional extensions, which I will show you. And in addition to that, I'll take you through this setting configuration here and how to apply it within your project. And that's what we're going to be utilizing throughout this whole project. Now, this is completely optional. You don't have to use linting and formatting tools. If you don't want to, you can simply just go ahead and copy the code as is. But like I said, these linting and formatting tools are really good practice and they do offer benefits, like I said, which will contribute to overall better code quality. First up, we're going to install the Python VS Code extension. So let's go ahead and select extensions here on the left-hand side. You can just type in Python. That should produce a nice little list. And you can see the top option here with 113 million downloads as a recording is the Python extension. Now this is going to enable and allow for us to actually install other extensions and it is providing the base for us to be able to do that as well as providing a base for us to install other Python related extensions. It also does come with a set of tools which provides linting, formatting and debugging within our Python code. So we'll just go ahead and install that first. Once that has been installed, if I click on this button, I think is highlighted and clear that and you can now see that Python has been installed. But in addition to that, it has also installed a Python debugger tool and the PyLance tool. We aren't necessarily going to be utilizing all the tools here within this project. PyLance being a type checking tool, which we don't necessarily touch on too much in this course, uh, at least at the start. And then we have the Python debugger, as it suggests, it's going to help us debug code as we type potentially. So like I mentioned, ultimately, this is a baseline for us to now install the next extension, which is going to be rough. Oh, actually, not like that at all in the extensions. So we're going to install Rough. So Rough is a lightweight linting tool for Python that helps maintain code quality by identifying errors, bugs, and style violations within our code. So with Rough, we can automatically analyze Python code for common issues and enforce code standards and best practices. And that does it all automatically as we type code. Now in the past, we might have installed Black and then PyLint, for example. So here, Rough basically does everything and all in one package with uh, super, fee, super, feed, super speed and efficiency. So this is really going to help us catch any errors early in the development process and ensure clean, consistent looking code. So let's go ahead and install that first. Now, let's remember that you cannot install Rough unless you have the Python extension installed. So make sure you install Python first. So that's rough installed. So that's going to sort out again, going to provide us linting. So looking for errors in our code and formatting. It's going to format how our code looks so it's consistent throughout our project. Right, so with that installed, there are some additional installs that we can now go for. The first one is out, so or night out. So here we can customize the look and UI setup. I'm looking in the wrong place again, aren't I? Okay, so in the extensions, that's where I'm looking. So Night Owl, Night Owl, there we go. So Night Owl, this is a theme for Visual Studio Code. Press install, you can see I'm using the Night Owl, Night Owl theme. So go ahead and change the theme if you would like to. So that's Night Owl. And then in addition to that, the final extension is the SQLite extension. But in actual fact, we're not gonna be utilizing SQLite in this project, so we won't install that in actual fact. So let's go back into the extensions. And we can see now we have installed Night Owl, Python, and Rough. 
So that will be pretty much it for this project. As we work through the project, we may install some additional extensions, but at least for now, that's where we're going to start. Now that we have installed the extensions, we now need to integrate them within our project or within Visual Studio Code. So as you might imagine, these extensions that we have installed, they have different settings that we can apply in different scenarios, for example. So here in Visual Studio Code, we can apply these settings as a global setting for all projects when we open up Visual Studio Code, or we can apply them to individual projects. And that's what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna create a new folder here. I'm gonna call this .vs code. Visual Studio Code is gonna be looking for this folder. Inside of this folder, we're gonna create a new file called settings.json. Visual Studio Code will read these settings before starting the project and then initiate anything that we've applied there. Now, if we go into the documentation and look for VS Code, I've left the code here that we're going to be utilizing, so we can just lift that in. And I'll quickly explain what's going on. So here we're applying settings for when Visual Studio Code identifies the Python language being utilized. So in a Python file, a .py file, there's going to be Python code. Visual Studio Code will identify the fact you're using Python code, and it can then um, apply the settings for that particular scenario. If we had different languages, we could apply that to the different languages. So here what we're doing is that we've defined a Visual Studio Code setting format on save. So what's going to happen, we have installed rough. Now, and we've defined the fact that we're using rough here as the default formatter for Python. So what's going to happen is that whenever we press save, this is going to initiate rough and rough is going to then edit our code or going to format our code. So if we go back into our main file here, let's just uh, make a weird break. So when I press save, so I press save now and you can see it's formatting the code now. So in actual fact, our settings have already taken place. They're already being picked up by Visual Studio Code and it's actually formatting our code based upon PEP 8 standards. So this in actual fact is rough in action. It's going to make sure that when we create code, it's all nice and neatly presented consistently throughout our code base. So that's um, why we've defined a format on save. So when we save, it's going to run the editor. In this case, we've defined it as the rough editor that we've installed. So in addition to that, we want to provide some additional information regarding when we um, save code. So here we have a setting called fix all. So this is something from rough. What it's going to try and do is fix common errors. So if I have an import here, if I import OS, oh no, sorry, let's import OS. Well, OS isn't actually being utilized here. And you can see straight away that PyLance and rough has identified the fact it's, um, we've applied it or assigned it, but we aren't actually using it. So it shouldn't really be in our code. Now with this setting here, fix all, when I press save, notice that it will be removed. So Rough will try and solve basic problems within our code automatically. So it is completely optional. You might prefer to turn it off. You can do. I found that I've now familiarized myself with that and it is fairly useful in some situations. Right, so we have the import organization as well. So what you're gonna see, I don't have an example here, but there's gonna be lots of imports up the top here in our file. What Rough is going to do is going to organize them nicely into different types of imports. So that it makes it easier for us to actually uh, find the imports at the top of the page. It's really just a small uh, feature which can be really beneficial when actually reading code. In addition to that, it just standardizes everything for us in terms of the imports at the top of the page. And I will point it out as and when we start utilizing it throughout our project. Right, so that will in actual fact happen automatically on save. And you can see we've defined the editor. In this case, we're using rough. So the last setting here is the editor rulers. So I've defined it as 88. Now by default, rough uses a Python maximum line length of 88. So I've set the rules to 88. And what this setting does, if I have a look in the main here, and you may need to restart your Visual Studio code for, for this to be applied, but you can see this line on the right hand side. So in actual fact, that is the line. Uh, that's not a very good example. That is the line whereby where the code, when the code goes over that line, the, the editor in this case, um, or the formatter in this case, rough, is going to try and place that code on the next line. So your code should never go across this line here. 
So again, the maximum line length is just a guideline aimed at promoting readability and maintainability of your code. So the Python enhancement proposal, PEP8, which is a style guide for Python code, recommends a maximum length of 79 characters. However, in recent years, in actual fact, I think it's been extended to 88 characters. So this ruler here on the right hand side is going to act as a visual guide to help us identify when we're getting close to the max line length here in our code. Although, like I said, Ruff is going to try and automatically format our code. So we never go past that default 88 line length. And like I said, Ruff by default utilizes a max line length of 88. So everything is nicely now formatted and synced. So that is going to be the setup for the start of the project. Like I said, it's completely optional whether you want to follow that. Here we're just trying to promote readability and maintainability of our code through utilizing these tools, providing that kind of consistent approach for developing here in our Python environment.